Hey, Merry Christmas morning. My kids are still asleep, so I think I have enough time to shoot a short video here. There is some interesting news to talk about. First of all, we're going to talk about, well, not the one I'm on right here. We're going to talk about the 3080 Ti getting a, a really good confirmation from MSI. There will also be some discussion of Intel and a class action lawsuit against CD Projekt seems to have actually hit now. Let's talk about it. Okay, so... Um, the 3080 Ti, so I've seen a couple of articles, one from Video Cards and one from WCCF Tech, talking about the fact that I guess on MSI's website, it, when you select their support and services, select your product, it is listing the uh, wrong Strix 3080 Ti 20GB, and that is very interesting, because those of you who have been following the news and leaks in my channel and things like that, and by the way, thank you everybody who has, still not even three months of doing the channel yet, and we're almost at 6K subscribers, thank you, and also as my um, uh, longtime viewers, long time, <laughs> I know I'll link everything I talk about in the description here, uh, new people to the channel, hi. Anyway, um, so we've got the 3080 Ti, 20 gigabyte, that's been rumored for a while now, uh, rumors originally placed it for a January release date, although later rumors have pushed that back to a February, kind of after the Chinese New Year. And as far as what should we expect from it performance-wise, um, well, basically a 3090 slightly tuned down, right? With uh, a little bit less um, VRAM and all that. But the point is, it's always been rumors. These have been leaks and rumors, but this is now showing up as a listed product on the MSI website. So that's why this is kind of a big deal today, is this is much more solid confirmation than we've had so far that this card will actually exist. Anyway, this is all that we actually have confirmed. So the other specs and things like that seem to be rumored, although this does seem to be confirming the 20 gigabytes of VRAM. The other specs that we've seen rumored are basically saying that it's going to be the same as the 3090, as far as the CUDA core goes and things like that. It's gonna have the same power draw as a 3080 at 320 watts. Uh, and since it's a 20 gigabyte interface, uh, that's going to get you a 320-bit bus, giving you the total bandwidth of 760 gigabytes per second. And again, it'll have the same power draw as a 3080. So basically, this is going to be extremely similar to a 3090, which is already not that far off from a 3080, other than the VRAM difference. Although in some of the leaks, we've also seen that like there's some other things, like this won't offy the NVLink bridge thing uh, that the 3090 does. So they're, they're trying to make some distinctions, but we still don't know a price. We still haven't seen exact performance. But again, I would expect this to perform about the same as a 3090, honestly. Um, uh, if, if there's going to be any, any small differences, I think they will be small, and it could be possible that this could clock a little bit higher um, based on some of these changes, but I, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We've seen, seen some rumors of that. Uh, but the point is, yeah, extremely similar to 3090, but the price, we really don't know yet, although the idea behind this seems to be it would be more of a 6900 XT competitor. Um, which is currently priced at 999 if you actually look at the reference MSRP. But we know that MSRPs and yeah prices right now are just insane. Uh, but that's kind of what we would ex expect is, is sort of that ballpark, but we'll see what happens. All right, like I said, I'll link this article as well as the um, video cards article in the description. Now, also on this page... Um, it seems like they've also listed the 3060 12 gigabyte. So the 3060 12 at 12 gigabytes has been another rumor that, again, we've had lots of leaks for, but hasn't really been confirmed. This, once again, seems to be the strongest confirmation we've seen that there will be, I mean, we knew there'd be a 3060, although it wasn't technically confirmed, but that it coming in at 12 gigabytes, right? So coming in at 12 gigabytes, which is really interesting considering the 3060 Ti comes in at eight gigabytes. So um, yeah, very interesting. So with this 3080 Ti coming in at 20 instead of the 3080's 10, uh, we're getting a 3060 with 12. What I'm personally very interested in is if we're gonna see a 3070 Ti coming in with also a bumped up VRAM capacity compared to the the normal 3070. That'd be interesting, and we don't have confirmation on that just yet. But it seems like they are maybe looking to uh, compete with the VRAM situation, which is AMD's biggest 
uh, clear, just like solid, yes, this is an advantage um, that they can uh, that they can offer. So yeah, very interested to see uh, this confirmation there. Again, the 3060 uh, at 12 gigabytes also seems to be confirmed here. Now, in other news, we see a leaked Intel Rocket Lake roadmap. This is just a leak, uh, so we can't you know, know for sure how new this is uh, and whether it's completely legitimate. The source is one Raichu. And it seems to be hinting that the mass production of their uh, Rocket Lake chips appears to be somewhere between like, what is this, the 12th week of 2021 and pushing out to the 20th week of 21, 2021. Uh, so that seems to be the mass production. Now there's this arrow here that could mean that they want to start producing sooner than that uh, or, or something. But again, uh, we've got this roadmap map uh just taking a look at that it does seem like that seems to be when they're targeting the mass production of the rocket lake chips now speaking of intel and production i did see an interesting article here yesterday uh, at wccf tech which once again i will leak um which is that intel has apparently doubled its manufacturing capacity in the last three years so we know that supply issues have been a thing, but apparently Intel has been trying their best. Now, Intel actually, you know, manufactures their own chips rather than um, partnering a uh, out on that, um, like most of the other people do. And so, yeah, this is kind of interesting. I guess they've been converting a whole bunch of space, even like office space and things like that. Um, here's their claim on their uh, wafer starts, wafer capacity since 2017. So they have been doing a lot to um, increase this production capacity. But, uh, and, oh yeah, and they've even got a, got a video here talking about it. So if you're interested, this is here. Um, but currently the demand still does exceed their uh, supply capacity. So anyway, just yeah, thought I'd throw that in there to when we're talking about the Intel production. Now let's finish off with Cyberpunk. So it's been rumored that this was probably gonna happen and it looks like it actually did. So CD Projekt is hit with two class action lawsuits for misleading investors with Cyberpunk 2077. Now, I've been really happy with the game, but I'm playing on a decent gaming PC. Apparently the issue here is with the base model consoles. So the PS4 base model and the Xbox One base model consoles, uh, the, uh, they are basically alleging that um, they've been misled, that CD Projekt uh, was not offering people the information about how those games were virtually unplayable. Let, let's just read the press release uh, here. So there's two different lawsuits, but they're pretty similar. Let's just read through one of them. So it says, according to the lawsuit, defendants throughout the class period made false and or misleading statements and or failed to disclose that. By the way, the defendants here being CD Projekt Red, the developers of Cyberpunk. Um, they failed to disclose that one, Cyberpunk 2077 was virtually unplayable on the current generation Xbox or PlayStation systems due to an enormous number of bugs. And two, as a result, Sony would remove Cyberpunk 2077 from the PlayStation Store and Sony, Microsoft, and CD Projekt would be forced to offer full refunds for the game. Now, I've got to say, the fact that Sony did pull it from the store uh, is not a good sign. I would say, like, I'm not a legal expert here, guys, but I would say if, if I was thinking about what would be good evidence that the game was actually broken, having a major <laughs> player like Sony pull it from their store seems to be some good evidence of that being the case. Now, consequently, CD Projekt would suffer reputational and pecuniary harm, uh, and four, uh, as a result, the defendant's statements about its business operations and prospects were materially false and misleading and or lacked a reasonable basis at all relevant times. When the true details entered the market, the lawsuit claims that investors suffered damages. Okay, so basically they're just saying that the broken nature of those base model versions of the games uh, was hidden until launch. Then the fact that... Um, Sony removed it from their store and uh, CD Projekt Sony and Microsoft are offering refunds on those games are uh, all strong evidence that the games were virtually unplayable in their state and that CD Projekt had misled uh, the public and investors at all times leading up to it about the state of 
those um, particular titles. Now, um, you know, honestly, like I said, I'm having tons of fun with the game on PC. A few bugs here and there, but <laughs> nothing that big. Uh, but yeah, I'm almost tempted to get the base model version of the game for my old uh, PS4 and kind of check it out. I'm, I'm curious how broken it actually is, rather than just looking at the memes of it online. I, I almost want to kind of experience it for myself. All right, guys, my kids are going to get up and open some presents. I hope you guys have a very happy Christmas.